So. Okay. While officially rabbinic Judaism started after the destruction of the Second Temple, which is the end of the first century, in reality, the idea of a peoplehood that is spread around the world started actually after the destruction of the first temple. Because while the Babylonians exiled uh, the Jews to the river of Babylon, etc., etc., and then Cyrus I came and told them for political... For those, excuse me, let me interrupt. Those who are interested, the giants won two to nothing. <laughs> oh. Thank you. So <laughs> this will, this will now take their mind away from that. And they <laughs> it's being recorded. No. <laughs> okay. the, in reality, the amount of Jews, the number of Jews that, that spread around the Middle East at that time, after the destruction of the first temple, was enormous. There were more than 100,000 Jews just in, in Egypt, and so also in Babylonia and in Persia. And we know the story about Esther and all that stuff. So that while the Jews have, were able to reconquest or reestablish an a, 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 a independent Israel again, and on the help of the Persians, the, the number of Jews in the Middle East was enormous. And one of them was Philo in Alexandria, who together with a big controversy with the Greeks, has, was the head of the Jewish community in, in, uh, in Cairo and Alexandria. The same thing happened in Babylonia, which there were an enormous, and also in Persia, enormous number of Jews with, a, with institution of learning. And the most famous of them were Sua and Pompedita, which were a school of learning which just about overshadowed the people in in, in Israel, Palestine. And the result was there actually were two uh, Talmuds, a Talmud Yerushalmi that was built in uh, compiled in Jerusalem. In, in, in Yavne, in Jerusalem, and the one that is the Talmud Bavli in, uh, in, in from Babylon. 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 Now, do they still both exist? Do they both get used? Or just one? Did it more most of them that? get used, but both mostly, get used. Mostly in, 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 uh, in uh, the Babylonian one. Yeah. Now, what is very interesting is that, the, of course, at that time there was no printing yet. So Yehuda Nasi wrote the Mishnah in writing. And the Mishnah was this first, the next step of the ancient Bible, which he compiled in six Shisha Sidre Mishnah, six capitals of, of the Mishnah. The six books of the Book, Mishnah. Yeah. And later, what happened is the Talmud was another much bigger uh, building built on this Mishnah, and they become 64 books of the Talmud. And there were commentaries pretty much yeah. on the Mishnah. Yeah. Yeah. And then, on the Mishnah. Uh, discussions. 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 On the Recall the records of discussions. Yeah. <coughs> and just oh. jumping over to the uh, 8th and 10th century, Rashi and Maimonides have taken that Talmud and explained it even more according to the time. And here is the difference between Christianity and Judaism. Judaism has really no constant building. It's a, it's a, a Torah Chaim. It's an evolving, life. In lo evolving it's life. It's a way of life. And while to the, uh, at the time I could not go to San Francisco because on the Shabbat 
now with the uh, car that doesn't get tired, I can go and listen to a, a lecture. So that's, that's, it's all around these uh, many, many centuries of Judaism. Now, can yeah. I ask a question jumping way ahead? So the, the, currently the, the <laughs> councils of the rabbis, the, the reform rabbis that write back and forth to each other now, are they, are they continuing the tradition of the Talmud or is it a completely separate well, thing? Well, it's a responsas. Responsas is a, is a tradition where Jews you'd, you'd write to Rashi or to uh, um, different uh, or Maimonides and said, what do you think about this and that? And that's totally, we don't have a dogma. But is it an it's addition to the dogma? dogma. What? It's it, you, addition to the Talmud or it's completely the, separate? The Talmud, the Talmud separate. well, like, one way to look at it, sure. The Talmud is a book and it's written down. But what the Talmud is, is, is a written it's down a recollection of discussions that went on for 300, 400, exactly. 500 years before it's written down. Same in Islam. And it's, and it's not meant to be read. I mean, it's not a book you sit down and read. Right. Right. You discuss it right. and you come to opinion. That's why they have the yeshivas, the schools, where these people spend their life time discussing what the Talmud said and then discussing the commentaries of the commentaries of the commentaries <laughs> of the Talmud the made by different rabbis. So no, but, but, but the question now, for example... So the point of, is, you can say that every time people sit down and discuss an element of the Talmud, they're adding to the Gomorrah part of the Talmud, the discussion part of the Talmud, yeah, we don't we don't include it's it not in the written down. books, and it's not. But the Talmud was not written down until one For many, years many, 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 many centuries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So I mean, the, but but now there are like these three different main sects of Judaism. But if, so if a reform rabbi writes back and forth with other reform rabbis, and they come up with the idea that it's okay to have artificial insemination, or it's okay to let somebody die without life support. Does that that doesn't have the same? The Talmud doesn't is not value the, of the Talmud that. is not prescriptive because if you read the Talmud, the they read the Talmud. There's always one point of view and three other points. Three of other view. points of view. Yeah. And so there's right. not yeah. And, and yeah. There's an attempt at the end to sort of say well, that's why they never do it. Very important point. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So that I was very important. For those of us that didn't grow up in Jewish homes, uh, uh, come back to it, help us understand better the Mishnah and the Talmud. Is, is the Mishnah con considered to be inspi an inspired no. group of writers? No. 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 The no. Mishnah just, and the Talmud are the, the, the Judah Hanasi, law. Judah Hanasi yeah. codified, codified yes. a, a recollection of the discussion of the rabbis from about zero yeah. up until, when was it, 200 or something? Yeah. About that. So he did that. The first couple of but, but then, discussions continued about the Mishnah, where people discussed it. And still being interpreted. And still being discussed and interpreted. <laughs> and then, I forget who it was, in, in, in Babylonia, you know, rec, you know, brought all these... Again, oral discussions. Okay. Together. Sa hmm? So Sa Sa right. And and included that as the Gemara. And if you look at a page of Talmud, it's got and there's a middle section, it's got the Mishnah here and the Gemara here, and on all around the sides it's Rashi. Uh, 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 the Rashi's commentary. Yeah. And in, you could say you could put more commentaries around the side. <laughs> oh yeah, that Tosefta. Yeah, you know. So, uh, okay. so co this commentaries of today uh, look maybe here. are the same merit or value as and the then, uh, Things change. Things but in, in, in Judaism, things could change. It's because changed. we have no codex no. and we don't. We have own <laughs> traditions. It now conscious. I would like to <laughs> let the listen. I cannot. Discuss this when you interrupt me. Sorry, sorry, that was my fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, it's, Go ahead. it's impossible. We all revert to Judaism when you when Jews start talking. <laughs> 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 Even if we're not. <laughs> the, the biggest <laughs> sense of Even though you are family. The, the, the <laughs> most important <laughs> thing, the point that I want to bring is the idea of a Messiah. <laughs> Messiah in Hebrew is Mashiach, an anointed man. So according to tradition, 
whether it is tradition, true or adapted, all the Mashiachs have to be from the house of David, including Jesus. But that is not important. The important is that the idea of Mashiach arrived when the situation, political and cultural, was so terrible that they, the people couldn't see anymore their life without some kind of a miracle from, G, from, from God <laughs> that, that, that will redeem them from the yoke of first of the Greeks and then of the Romans. And later, of course, also in the Middle East, from the mid, middle uh, of the, the Christians in, in Europe. The Mashiach, this idea of Mashiach, Start actually, Cyrus. Uh, uh, well, no, I, I would say just around the time of Herodot, where the, the Jews were so this desperate, and that's where we come to Qumran. Qumran was a, a Jewish uh, a, a community. Uh, on the, the, the shores of the Dead Sea. There were the Essenes. There were Essenes where, where absolute was, where also uh, never had any women there. And they have created this idea of actually mon monasteism too. Monasteism. Yeah. Monasteism. Monasteism. Yeah. They were That's the right. first Jesuits. <laughs> and <laughs> on top of it, when we talk about Masada, which was the end of the Herod idea. The idea of the Jews who commit suicide rather than be enslaved and brought to Rome. And remember the most important uh, building in Rome is the Titus, uh, the Titus, the, the Titus Arch. Arch. It's one of the most important. Oh, yeah. no. The Jews were nothing in the, forum. in the Roman Empire, but they built the biggest arch in Rome over the victory <coughs> over the Jews, yeah. and you see the menorah and everything, and they, they were schlepped mm. to, to Rome in enslaved in thousands of people. So, but these people were not all killed, and they, in, in fact, in my opinion, were the, the East that started to grow in the, in the Greek and Roman world of monotheism versus the, the polytheism of the Roman and Greek era, which is a very interesting thing. Now, there were three major revolts. One is the one in, that destroyed the temple in 70, the second was, the revolt was uh, on, of a guy called uh, Quito, which no pe very few people ever heard about it. The Quito revolt was a revolt of the young people in the diaspora, in, Gre in uh, uh, Babylonia and in, in <coughs> Egypt. They came back to the land of Israel to get rid of the Roman, and that was a one one seven, it lasted two years, it was destroyed. And after that came the biggest revolt of all, which was the revolt of Gabba Kochba, which was in um, um, 172 to 176 of the Common Era.